morning, everyone. Welcome to all here present in Star of the Sea, Cleveland, and to those joining us from your home via live stream on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Take a moment to greet one another. Our Blessed Mother was born of David's line, the ancient and great King of Israel. God's promise to David was fulfilled in the Virgin Mary. May God, Mary responded to God's call with her, yes, I am the handmaid of the Lord. She said, let what you have said be done to me. In this Eucharist, let us ask God's help to say our yes to what God asks of us. Please stand and join our entrance hymn. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you, and good morning. And so as we join together this morning to celebrate our Eucharist on this fourth Sunday of Advent, let's pause for a moment as we acknowledge our sins, asking God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendour of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. For forth we beseech, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And we remain standing, of course, as we sing the refrain during the lighting of the Advent candles.
A reading from the second book of Samuel. Once David had settled into his house and the Lord had given him the rest of all the enemies surrounding him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, Look, I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in the tent. Nathan said to the king, Go and do all that is in your mind, for the Lord is with you. But that very night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David. Thus the Lord speaks. Are you a man to build me a house to dwell in? I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be the leader of my people, Israel. I have been with you all on all your expeditions. I have cut off all your enemies before you. I will give you fame as great as the fame of great, the greatest on earth. I will provide a place for my people, Israel. I will plant them there and they shall dwell in that place and never be disturbed again. Nor shall the wicked continue to oppress them as they did in the days when I appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give them rest from all their enemies. The Lord will make you great. The Lord will make you a house. And when your days are ended, and you are laid to rest with your ancestors, I will preserve the offspring of your body after you and make his sovereignty secure. I will be a father to him and he a son to me. Your house and your sovereignty will always stand secure before me and your throne will be established forever. The word... The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Through all the ages, my mouth will proclaim your truth. Of this I am sure that your love lasts forever, that your truth is firmly established as the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your dynasty forever and set up your throne through all the ages. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, the rock who saves me. I will keep my love for him always. For him, my covenant shall endure. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Glory to him who is able to give you the strength to live according to the good news I preach and in which I proclaim Jesus Christ, the revelation of a mystery kept secret for endless ages, but now so clear that it must be broadcast to pagans everywhere to bring them to the obedience of faith. This is only what scripture has predicted, and it is all part of the way the eternal God wants things to be. He alone is wisdom. Give glory, therefore, to him through Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. The 
the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Alleluia. be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favoured, the Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favour. Listen. You are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, but how can this come about, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with a shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son, and she whom people call barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Lord, let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. I wonder whether you've had time to reflect back on previous Christmases. I think it's always good to think back, maybe to our childhood even, you know, what Christmas meant to us long ago. But if we're among the fortunate ones, you know, I think one of our greatest memories, of course, about particularly early Christmases, is the part that our mother played. You know, whether she be young or old in our memory, we know that if it hadn't been for her, we wouldn't be here. That she, committing herself to be mother, made our well-being her vocation. You know, these days, mothers are very busy, most having to go to work. But I think all mothers would see their main vocation is rearing their children. And that's their greatest joy. And particularly with, uh, with mothers, you know, we have a, a special relationship, a, a relationship of mutual love. And so it doesn't come as any great surprise that as we come very close to, 
to Christmas, Mary is very central in today's gospel. John the Baptist, John the Baptist has prepared the way and now Mary takes centre stage. And this gospel gives a very simple but moving account of the greatest message that was ever delivered when we stop and think about it. You know, in this gospel we're told very simply and, pa and plainly that this young woman, and she would have only been in her early teens, after receiving this awesome message, knelt down at the angel Gabriel's mysterious and awesome message and in freedom of heart gave her total assent, gave the total gift of herself. And she said to God, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let what you have said be done to me. And we've heard this gospel so many times. And we probably don't appreciate the incredible yes that Mary was saying. God didn't tell Mary that she was to give birth, but rather he asked her through the angel. And Mary said her yes, even though she would have understood very little of the implications of this, this yes. But at this, uh, the Annunciation to Mary was the moment when God first revealed the mystery that had been kept secret for endless ages as we heard referred to in our second reading. It's hard for us to get our heads around the fact that, that God loves us so much that he wanted to become one of us. Mary was needed by God so that God might carry out his plan for the world and so send his son as one like us. Mary was, was asked to cooperate with God to be the mother of Jesus, God's son. And the moment she said her yes, light dawned, salvation dawned, and Mary brought salvation to birth at Bethlehem on that first Christmas day. Mary didn't say her yes only once to God. She had to confirm that yes many times during her life. She had no idea at the birth of Jesus that, that every door would close in her face. She didn't know that shortly after the birth she was to become a refugee in Egypt. She certainly didn't know that some 30 years into the future she would walk with her beloved son on that terrible road to Calvary and watch him suffer a horrible death on the cross. So on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we know that Christmas is, what, four or five days away, and our thoughts turn to Mary, our mother, who's a model for us in the yes that she said, but also a model of listening and waiting for the Lord to come. As she pondered what the angel's greeting could mean, she came only, only um, gradually, you know, to understand the, uh, the mystery, the message, the mystery of Christmas, of Christ's birth. God not only wanted to become one with us, but he wants us to learn from him, to learn from his mother, so that we will become one with Jesus by following the example of Mary. In listening to the word of God, Mary shows us a most important aspect of, of being Christian. To be Christian means to be a person who keeps our ears open, listening to what God is asking of us. And we pray that like Mary, we can say a yes and answer that call. And we don't only say it once at baptism, 
but it's a yes we say probably every day in all the circumstances and situations we face to say yes I know Lord that you're with me I know what you're asking me to do please help me say yes and we can ask Mary to, to help us to have something of that that attitude of listening and responding to God's call so that you know we can play our part by being ready and willing to bring Jesus to birth in the way that we live our daily lives. Mary brought Jesus to birth and uh, she's with us praying for us that we can bring Jesus to birth in our lives. An essential part of this listening, of course, is to spend time in prayer. In prayer we speak to God, we talk to God about what's going on in our lives, we ask God to help us in various situations, we help him, we ask that God will help us to be, you know, truly Christian in the way we live our lives. But we're also spending time in prayer in listening. You know, what is God asking of me today? And it's an answer that each one of us needs to wrestle with and uh, respond to. He's asking us to really do our best to live the light of Jesus in everything that we do and in everything that we say. And Christmas, very special feast, celebrating the birth of Christ into our world, very much into our hearts. And so let's pray in this Eucharist today that we will open our hearts to listen and that we'll do our very best to respond to what God asks of us. And of course, it begins as soon as we leave the church. I was very disappointed last Saturday night. It was raining. People were leaving the church after Mass. And, of course, there was a bit of a hold-up outside the pergola as elderly people were being helped into the... Uh, into their cars. People queuing up behind them with cars were most impatient, you know, trying to push past while the others were loaded into a car. And I mean, that's very much like all of us, isn't it? You know, we come and we pray in church, but the real test is what we do when we walk outside the door. And if we walk outside the door and just go back to not worrying and caring about other people, there's a lot of listening that we need to do. And so let's pray today that we will be patient. And Christmas is a time when we can be impatient. And men folk, don't be standing around saying, where's my dinner? What about hopping in and saying, what can I do to help? Because as special as Christmas is, it's a time that can bring out the best and it's also a time that can bring out the worst. So let's open our hearts to listen and then make a loving response by saying yes to what God is asking of us, that we will be the light of Christ in our world, that we will bring hope, that we will bring joy. We profess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father of mine. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of 
My sisters and brothers, as we prepare for the coming of Christ, let us ask God for our needs and the needs of our world. that nations will not resort to violence and war, but will seek peace and reconciliation. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord Jesus may find us watching and ready at his coming. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That our communities and our families may welcome Christ into our lives and learn to receive him in the poor and in the suffering of this world. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That the promise of endless life will be the reward of those who have completed their earthly pilgrimage, including Ben Curtis. We also pray for Tom Williamson, the O'Reilly family, and Sandra Foster on their anniversary. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may heal the sick, rid the world of hunger, and protect us from all harm, especially Kevin Madden. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That in our Christmas preparations, we do not lose sight of the Lord Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. And we pause as we pray for our own special intentions. Almighty and ever-living God, we come before you in faith and love to praise your goodness and to acknowledge our need. We ask you to grant our prayers as we wait for the coming of Christ and we make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Archbishop, and Kent, his assistant bishop, with the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her blessed spouse and Joseph with the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you, Judy. Thank you. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, John. Peace be with you, Helen. Thank you. Peace be with you, Mary.
God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ do for his sake. Good to the Lord.
I hope that you've all booked in for your Christmas masses. Lots of people have already done so. It's very simple. And I'm sure you here today have uh, been very familiar with the process of getting into our web page and simply following the prompts to get in to register for masses. Christmas masses, I'm sure you well know by now. The Christmas Eve mass, 6 p.m., but it's preceded by carols, which begin at 5.30 is the outdoor one. Then we have one in the church at 9 p.m., Christmas Day, 7.30 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. Mass on Stradbroke Island. This year is at St. Paul of the Cross Church at Dunwich, and it's at 9 o'clock. Tomorrow evening we have our Advent Mass of Reconciliation, and it begins at 7 p.m. And once again... Many people have already booked in for this Mass, but it's, as I say, very simple to register. If you have any great difficulty booking in, ring up Alba in the office. So I hope this last week of preparation for Christmas goes well. All the Christmas shopping done? No? Yes? No? I think as you get older, it's harder to buy something for older people, isn't it? What am I going to buy them? I've got one brother. And I think, what am I going to buy you? He said, oh, well, just get me the normal tin of condensed milk. <laughs> and over the years, I think, the price of those has gone up incredibly. So it may break the bank. But I hope Christmas Day is a very happy one for you. And I hope that you can... Make sure that you do attend Mass because the centre of it all is not Santa Claus, is it? Where did the centre is really Jesus born for love of us? And uh, we celebrate it when so many people come along to church and, uh, you know, take part in the real religious heart of what Christmas is all about. The beautiful decorations on the church over the road, you know, they're a bit of an inspiration too. For Christmas. So if you haven't driven past and had a little bit of a look, make every effort to just come and have a little bit of a look at their beautiful decorations. And of course, they do speak through their wonderful uh, lights about the, uh, the real meaning of Christmas, you know, Jesus at the centre. So let's stand up together now as we pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's birth, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we go to announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Have a great Christmas.